Welcome to the Witchfinders Gaming Vault Review and today I'm going to be looking at a Commodore 64 budget game. It's Black Hornet and let's take a look at the fact file for this one. Black Hornet was released in 1992. It's a European game. It was published by High Tech Software and developed by PAL Developments. And the price I paid for the game was just £1.85. I did buy it fairly recently, so I think I might have got a bargain there. Because the current going rate is unknown. I can't find a single copy of it for sale on eBay currently or in the completed listings. So maybe I got a bargain and it's quite rare, or perhaps just nobody wants it. This is a game from High Tech Software, probably most well known for a load of Hanna-Barbera cartoon related games. This one looks quite serious in comparison, so let's take a look at it. So looking at the packaging more closely we can see a quite nice Black Hornet logo. We've got the Black Hornet which is some kind of plane flying over some landscape there. The high tech software logo in the bottom left. And in the top left it says it's got the seal of quality. Which of course means absolutely nothing because they've just printed it on their own packaging. There's also an annoying little dirty mark there which I thought initially might have been a plane in the background. But I'm pretty sure it's just a dirty mark. So moving on to the spine. Quite nice again. Got the Black Hornet logo. Picture of the plane and some other stuff that doesn't really matter too much and then moving on to the back we've got the overview of the game here it says if you like the idea of flying an advanced military jet in a simulated combat mission then this is the game for you this high-tech mega game puts a highly advanced and extremely well something equipped i think aircraft at your disposal features include different combat areas four different offensive weapons three different defense systems Refuel and rearm facility, Black Hornet, a glimpse of the future, the next generation of stealth type aircraft, question mark. Well, I don't think so, it's just something that was made up for this game. There's a bunch of screenshots down the side, including what looks like a loading screen there, uh, and it's obviously some kind of shoot em up. I think vertically scrolling, although it's quite hard to make out because of the join of the cassette case being overlaid over some of the images there and uh, barcode and stuff like that at the bottom, the address of the publisher and things like that, that about does it for the outside of the packaging, I think. Here's the cassette for the game which is nice and consistent, it's got the same kind of logo for the game as it had on the front cover so that's quite nice. Clear cassette shell with the high tech software logo on it as well, nothing on the back there. So let's move on to the instructions and here they are. So it says, brief specification, this aircraft has many of the latest features. Titanium honeycomb structure for great strength with extreme lightness, fuel cooled exhaust nozzles, Unstable, does that say unstable? Unstable, unstable aerodynamic design with fly by wire computer systems for maximum maneuverability. I don't think unstable is a good thing to have on a plane, really, but there you go. Generic weapons and fueling mounts enabling different weapons to be carried without modification and enable refueling at enemy installations. Generic weapons, again, doesn't sound particularly good, but there we go. Final briefing, at your disposal is a range of air-to-air -air and air-to-ground weapons with which you can destroy the might of enemy forces, its aircraft, ships and ground installations. All your skill and controls will be needed moving Black Hornet in all three dimensions to avoid or destroy enemy missiles whilst ensuring that the aircraft does not collide with the terrain. And there's another picture of it, just in case you forgot what it looked like. And then it goes on inside with more information. Uh, points again by shooting ground installations and enemy aircraft. Black Hornet can be shut down if it receives enough direct hits or runs out of fuel. I think that's basically saying you're going to lose lives. Normal control is maintained through the joystick. Shadow is visible on the screen. The instructions are a little bit ripped here. They've got stuck together with the other page there. So I can't quite read this. But basically when an aircraft or, or airfield... No, sorry, what else did I say? An airfield or aircraft carrier is encountered, then you have the option to land. You can do this by pushing up and fire at the beginning of the runway. On landing successfully, an option window will rise, uh, but the enemy is still active and can still inflict damage. You can buy weapons that you can afford as well as extra fuel, shield, turbo boost and side thrust. The last two of these speed up your ship allowing you to avoid enemy fire. In-flight weapons can be switched by pressing the space bar. There's lots going on in this. It looks a little bit more in depth than a bog standard scrolling shooter but we'll see what happens when the game loads. Uh, and there's some loading instructions there, controls and some copyright information. And then the last two pages of the inlay here have got some adverts for other games from high tech software. We've got the Jetsons and Pottsworth and Company. And once again, we've got the seal of quality assurance there on the spine, which as I said before, means absolutely nothing. The game's loading then, and as you can see, it's got a pretty nice loading screen. It says Black Hornet at the top in a pretty similar font to the one on the front of the packaging. Got a picture of the plane, just like the one on the packaging as well. Pretty good recreation of that. Helicopter fire night in the background as well, and a nice explosion. Some nice sort of vapor trails behind the main plane, and a couple of logos as well. High tech software bottom left, and Rave on the bottom right. I'm not sure what that refers to, if that's the person that did the title screen here, or perhaps another production company or development company involved with the game. 
So yeah, overall pretty impressed with that loading screen. Midway through loading this screen's appeared, it very clearly says reset tape counters at all the zeros and press fire, so I think we're looking at a multi-load game, not a thing you get too often from budget games, generally speaking they tend to be single load, so perhaps it's quite an in-depth game with lots of levels and therefore needs the multi-load or lots of stuff going on in those levels. We'll find out when the game loads and to do that I'm going to have to press fire. Okay, so the game's loaded here, you can see the title screen, and again I like the consistency here, the title on the screen here, Black Hornet, looks very much like the packaging and the loading screen, so I like the consistency there. As you can see it's copyright PAL developments, as I mentioned in the intro, 1992, published by High Tech Software, but it's also mentions that it's a Rave production, hence why there's that Rave logo on the loading screen. Don't know who Rave are and how they relate to everything else that's on there, but you can also see that it was programmed by Nick Taylor, graphics by Jason Brazhill, Sonics by Dave Spicer. I assume that includes the background music on this title screen, which is pretty decent. Kind of an upbeat uh, music tune that you'd sort of associate with flying a plane, I suppose. A little bit Top Gun-esque, perhaps, that kind of thing. So that sort of fits. And we've got a high score table, which we've already seen rotate around several times. The low score there is 250 points, which I hope I'll be able to get when I start the game. So with the title screen covered, let's start the game. Okay, so I've pressed fire to start and immediately, straight away, it says level 1, press fire to start again. Seems a bit superfluous to me, but there we go. Let's do that. So the game starts and your little black plane takes off from the runway and as you can see it's a vertically scrolling shooter and uh, the plane's quite hard to spot sometimes over some of these landscapes, but it's a very brown landscape to kick things off with. Uh, we've got ground based and airborne targets, some of which fire at you and also a lot of things you can destroy on the ground which is quite a cool thing so for example I can fire at these uh, oil drum things or whatever they are and destroy them and, and this uh, set of strange looking buildings here and also this blue area here can all get blown up uh, so that's the aim of the game is just to destroy as much as you can uh, you've got a variety of weapons, you've got a machine gun which is always uh, usable and it actually can hit some ground based targets and obviously the airborne ones as well. We can also cycle through a variety of uh, other weapons, bombs and things which are limited in quantity but can be replenished at various points in the game which we'll get to in due course. Oh, <coughs> excuse me, I've crashed there. So there's an interesting mix of enemies because some of these things look a bit space age and, and then there's others that look very much real world so those are very space age uh, things going against me and these things remind me of Xevious this sort of indestructible mirror spinning plate things that come towards you uh, so yeah as I was saying you've got a variety and there goes another life a variety of weapons and what I found is that these are the best ones which are I've now equipped the uh, heat seekers and they only fire when an enemy uh, that's suitable to be destroyed by them comes on the screen so you're not wasting them by dropping them on the ground all the time like you do with some of the others so as you can see at the moment I'm just shooting the machine gun uh, and there's no enemies around but here's a landing strip which if I go close to it hold down fire and push forwards I land on it and that allows me to now replenish some of my supplies so the first thing I'm going to do is stock up on more of those homing missiles because they're good I'm also going to uh, you can do things like repair and refuel but you can also give yourself a turbo boost or side thruster which uh, speeds the plane up but what happens when you're buying those things is you're using your points so uh, there's a kind of decisions to be made whether you want to use up some points and get some good firepower or uh, save your points and get more points at the end of the game but of course you can replenish damage and fuel so there's the, the opportunity to basically save yourself a life if you've almost run out of life, run out of uh, damage or energy or whatever it's supposed to be. Uh, you can replenish that, so that's pretty cool. You can make a decision of whether to do one thing or the other. Uh, you don't have to land on those landing strips at all, you can just fly over them as well. So on we go anyway, uh, it's quite a slow scrolling, which is probably good because it allows you to get around the screen quite well. As you can see those homing missiles are doing a great job at just taking out every enemy that comes along. They will run out eventually. 
but they're pretty good. Uh, oh yeah, they've run out now and I've switched back to some kind of bombs that only drop on the ground. They can't shoot any uh, airborne enemies, they only drop on buildings and things like that. It's pretty cool that you've got this destructible environment, uh, there's lots of things that you can destroy. Everything moves very smoothly as well, there's, the graphics are quite small but they're nicely drawn. Uh, so you've got quite a big play field and because it scrolls quite smoothly as well oh sorry, sorry I lost, yeah, not smoothly, slowly because it scrolls smooth, smoothly, what am I saying? because it scrolls slowly, I should talk more slowly I think um, you, you get plenty of chance to move around the screen and destroy lots of stuff so that's pretty cool as well so I've racked up a reasonable score now, I've got um, over a thousand points which is not a huge amount of score for a game like this you might say uh, and on we go, uh, it is as I said quite a long level uh, and quite slow moving Oop. not really much more to say about it, it's a scrolling shooter I, I would say it's best described as a cross between uh, Xevious which I mentioned and maybe 1942 um, although there wasn't a lot of ground based targets in 1942 but there was in Xevious so I think that's a fair sort of thing maybe something like Tiger Heli as well those kind of games, those toe plan shooters, um, it kind of fits those that kind of uh, design. I think probably influenced by those. These things are really hard to destroy if you haven't got a suitable weapon, uh, which I have actually, because I've got the heat seekers. I just didn't have them engaged. But yeah, the, the little sort of trap doors in the ground. You've got like a split second to shoot those before uh, they just unleash a barrage of death towards you I suppose you might say uh, so that gives another life one left I think I'm not sure how much of this level remains hopefully not too much oh no here we go I think this is the end of it now yeah so finally coming in to land on the runway at the end of that stage what happens next the screen's gone blank I guess that means it wants me to load in the next level so I better press play and do that there we go it's loading in so hopefully it won't take too long but you don't need to see a load of loading bars do you level 2 is loaded up then it didn't take too long about a minute and a half to load it off the tape as I said before quite surprised you're getting a multi load on a budget game that is quite rare so let's press fire to start and get going and here we go so here's level 2 and it's very green uh, you do get given an extra life for completing a level so I've got two lives left now and uh, it looks to be more of the same in terms of the ground based enemies uh, this oh that one's got homing missiles oh get away from me wow that really does want to home in on me I hope, yeah it's gone even oh and I've lost a life already so that's not got me off to a very good start yeah so there's a bit of variety in the enemies didn't see those homing missiles too much in the first stage as I recall uh, so it's more of shooting the ground based uh, targets blowing them up which is as I said quite a nice thing to be able to do uh, and shooting yeah again this enemy we've seen before well this is new we've got some little trucks going across a bridge there which I've now destroyed that's quite neat that's something you see in the Japanese shooters as well little ground based uh, enemies driving around on roads and things like that so I do feel like it's got a bit of influence from the Japanese shooters is that my last life gone no I've got another life one thing I didn't use in the first stage was that which is you can hold the fire button down and there's a smart bomb which completely greys out the screen for a split second uh, and then blows up everything on it I don't know how many of them you get but I'm gonna use them I've got another one yeah because I'm gonna need them for this level because I've only got one life left I really really need to get to uh, one of those recharge landing strips yep there goes another one don't think I've got any uh, of the uh, missile type weapons left uh, I don't seem to be able to shoot any of them or cycle between any of them so I guess I haven't uh, so this could may well not last for much longer but uh, at least we've seen a bit of the second level I'm not going to play again because I can't be bothered with the multi load and all that kind of stuff it is quite a hard game again similar to Japanese shooters in that respect oh here's a landing strip I've got almost no energy left at all but luckily I've got to the landing strip and I can get myself some power ups and I'm going to really max out on them here so firstly Let's restore all that damage, or remove all that damage would be more closely the way to say it. So I'm going to get some more smart bombs, going to get some more homing missiles, and let's just let's just go the whole hog 
my score is now all the way back down to 640 but at least I can last a bit longer so hopefully I'm gonna have the homing missiles there we go so that should help me and I can get a little bit further into this as a result of that homing missiles definitely the best thing to pick up uh, from the missile replacement thing which uh, is quite a neat touch not something you see in many shooters it kind of reminds me of Xenon 2 uh, I, don't, I think that probably came out about the same time as this so maybe this was influenced by it I think it was a 91 was it Xenon 2 where you got the in-game shop in the middle of the game that you could spend your credits on that you'd earned in this one you have to spend your points so yeah that's an interesting touch as I said looks like they've run out oh no I've still got some left still got some homing missiles left and uh, I've got some smart bombs as well so I may well use that here let's use one there we go gets rid of all the ground based uh, destructible targets as well so you can really max out your points by using one of those at least so things are actually not going too bad oh no I said that and then I immediately died <laughs> okay well and there we go that's game over so now it's gonna make me yeah rewind the tape and back to zero and press fire and then press play and load it in again but I'm not gonna do that that'll do for this game not a bad game I would say uh, it was I guess probably 2 99 or 3 99 at that point and to be honest for a budget game in 1992 not too bad it's got a few original ideas to it the graphics aren't bad didn't mention the sound at all but you just get sound effects in game so it would have benefited from for some music perhaps but um, I still think it was pretty decent the sound effects weren't too bad uh, you've got multiple levels not sure how many at least three I think possibly four uh, maybe even more than that I don't know because I've never got past the second level it's quite hard and I don't know what else to say about it really I think it was pretty decent budget game and uh, Zap I think gave it like 42% which I think was pretty harsh it's probably worth 70 to 80% at least even in 1992 where the best games were all had all been and gone by that point I guess so yeah overall pretty impressed by that one and I'll definitely be keeping that for the time being at least I might go back and play it again at some point so that's all for this review thanks very much for watching and if you've got any thoughts about the game then please let me know in the video comments that'll do for this one other than of course picking another game to play next time around that's another review done then, which means it's time to pick out the game for next time around from the tin at random as always. So let's see what we get. And coming out for the next review is a Mega Drive game. It's Gadget Twins. So I'll be playing that next time around. Join me for that when it happens. Thanks very much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.